Hey guys, Amy and Louie here, sweating like crazy in a sauna. Uh, so, and we chose this, so, whoa, uh, crazy people we are. So, we're here with your playful experiment for the week, and in case you don't already know, this is an experiment, a fun, bonding thing that you do with a partner, and your partner is ex assigned to you, and it's in our group on a list. Our group is no one can tell us. You go find the list, you find your partner, you guys get together. You decide on how you're going to meet up, likely a video call or something, and you're going to do your playful experiment together. And today, our playful experiment, or this week, our playful experiment is going to be, I'm going to call it guilty pleasures confession, but it isn't about the guilty pleasures that you would normally go to in your mind. Like, I love eating ice cream in the middle of the night. I mean, yeah. yes, absolutely. But, um... They're not those. I want us to dig like really, really deep. These are like personal, inner, like almost, I'm going to say twisted, but I'm not saying that with any sort of negative attachment to it. Uh, little things that you like or that you enjoy that are not maybe typical for others to enjoy. And again, it is not having to do with the outer world. Like I enjoy, you know, this kind of art or whatever that nobody else enjoys. I'm not talking about the outer stuff. I'm talking about the inner stuff. Like what do you enjoy? What feelings do you enjoy that are a little bit twisted or that other people might not say or that we might not claim out loud as our, our most proud, glorious moment? Um, and you're going to be confessing them to each other. You're going to sit there and scroll through and talk them through together and do that confession, that purging, that letting it be out loud and owning it and claiming it and loving it about yourself. Because that's the part that we want to get to for real, to like see these things for what they actually are. So I'll start giving examples because I think that's the best way to illustrate what I mean. Because this is definitely different uh, than your typical guilty pleasure. For me, one of the biggest ones that I realized lately is like, ooh, I like to push people. <laughs> and it's like, oh, God, that doesn't sound awesome. Uh, but like, yeah, I like to push people. And it is kind of a part of my job. I teach aerial dance. I've been teaching for years. And yeah, I have to like push people to do their best, even better than they think they can. And like, no, just when you think you're done, like, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing, you know, and um, I like it. It works for me. And I've kind of inquired further as to why, because that's also what we want to do is like, don't just get to the what you like, but get to the why, because then, man, you really start to know yourself like, oh, mm, you know, this is why. And then you have some more sort of like mastery or ownership in it, because you can also make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Um, all right. I love pushing people because I love the human will. I love to see somebody's spirit or will show up. And it's like a peep show or something to me. It's like beautiful artwork. Like, ooh, here comes their will. They're like pulling that grit out of the deep part of themselves and they think they can't go on, but they're going to keep going, you know? And I love it. I love to see that. So that's why I love to push people. I also love to push myself for the very same reason. Like when I show up and pull something out of myself that I didn't think I had in me, I love that beautiful stuff. Um, so as you can see, this is the kind of thing where... You don't like often admit, like, I push people. I like it. Um, but, you know, it's only a problem if it's out of balance. It's only a problem if it's out of, in, you know, in this place where I'm pushing people too far. And when I know where it comes from, like, uh, it's the human will. It's beautiful. I also know that there are other ways that I can see the human will. And I, it doesn't always have to be through pushing, but it can be through pushing. And now I know how to balance it. You know, it's just like, I've become more of my own best friend in this moment because now I just like realize like, Ooh, because, okay. I mean, I'm just using this as an example. When you see your best friend or your family member or somebody that you just know, like the back of your hand, do something, even if it's not, you know, even if it is kind of their little guilty pleasure thing, it makes you smile. Cause you're like, I know what they're doing here. Oh no, this one loves to push people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's what you get to do with yourself. You want to get to this place where, you are able to be like, yeah, you know, that's my guilty pleasure. I laugh, I smile because I know myself and I cherish myself and I love myself. You know, this little guilty pleasure thing, it doesn't have to be like, oh my God, it's my dark side. And like, I have to, you know, make sure that I'm not going to just like wreck the entire world because almost all of these guilty pleasures, uh, that's the other thing is like out of balance, they can be pretty destructive. That's what defines them as guilty pleasures. 
but they don't have to be. They can also just be things that you smile about because, you know, I like to push people. But if it's out of balance, that can be pretty destructive. Um, so some more, some more, some more. Um, another one that a friend of mine said um, when we were doing this exercise that he really likes um, pity. He loves pity, even though that's kind of like a weird thing, you know, to kind of play the victim and try to get pity from people. But he sees how he kind of likes it because it shows that he matters uh, or that like people care for him. And once again, like there's nothing wrong with wanting to see the human will. There's nothing wrong with wanting people to show you care or concern. Um, or like with you wanting to see it, wanting to feel care and concern from somebody. That's why I'm saying get to the root because you have to get to the root so that you can realize like where that comes from. Because if you're like, I like to be pitied, you might not really understand like how to embrace that and love that. But if you're like, Oh, why? Because I love to feel people's care and concern for me. There's nothing wrong with that. That's some beautiful stuff. We all have that. Um, and then you just know I can't let it get out of step or out of line or imbalanced in a way that's destructive. You know, I can't sit and play victim all the time. And there are other ways that I can see other people's care and concern. I could actually, instead of being like sneaky about it and going in the back door trying to get people's pity, I could just ask, you know, hey, could you tell me what you appreciate about me? Or like, I love love notes. Will you write me one? Or, you know, something that still gets you that care or that concern um, that you want and that you love. What's one of yours? Mine is, I like to feel right. I like to be right. Oh yeah, that's a human thing. And I mean, what do you think is at the core of that? I feel like I like to be right because it's like I know better or like I know, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, like so. A wiser one, like yeah. who knows. Self-knowledge, which is not a big deal, right? But like, or knowledge, wise, wisdom, you know, this is not a, or even I can see like an element of like power, you know, or like personal yeah. integrity. Like I'm powerful. Um, I know what's going on. I'm wise. Like those aren't problems. That's Just true, yeah. when they get out of balance, they can be destructive. When you are going in trying to be right instead of, you know, anything else mattering, like no person's feelings, nothing matters. You just want to have that thing and you can have it in other ways. You can still feel powerful by navigating the situation skillfully and making sure everybody's heard, or you could still feel like wise if you present an idea that isn't about being right, but just like an idea that you're presenting. Um, yeah, I definitely need to work on that more. I've caused myself some problems going in there. Yeah. Thinking, I mean, I'm going to be right. Nothing else. Everyone's wrong. But you see, it's like so beautifully hum human to like have these and to love that about yourself and to just like be able to smirk when you see it like, Oh, here's the, I want to be right thing coming up and like, mm -hmm. okay, let me tap into what it is that I'm actually wanting. I'm wanting to feel some power in this situation because there's no problem with that. We're wanting to feel like influential, like I, you know, matter and people want to listen to me and, you know, no problem with that. Just like realizing that you can do that other ways too. Um, or just knowing that that's at the bottom of it. Like that's what it is. And it's kind of getting out of control right now. And I'm going to handle that, um, or not and laugh about it later. You know, um, another one that I really like. So there's this quote in a show that we love. Um, that's like, if you don't have anything nice to say, Come sit next to me. Um, and I totally, it's like, sounds like a rotten thing to say, but I am all about that. You know, <laughs> like if you don't have anything nice to say, come over here, let's talk about it. Um, and so what does that mean? Like that I'm enjoying complaining or, you know, and yeah, could be, I enjoy grumpiness and complaining. I enjoy the feeling of getting to be grumpy. I enjoy listening to other people's grump. Um, there's some pleasure in it. And the reason is, or at the root of it, I think that it's about honesty. I like that real talk stuff. I don't need you to spit out the niceties. You know, if you don't have all that nicey, politey kind of small talky stuff to say, mm -hmm. come sit next to me. Like what's at the core of it is I just want to hear the real stuff, the stuff that's actually happening, the truth that's not, you know, coded in all the different niceties. I want to talk real. And again, like only maybe when that's out of step, does that get to be a problem? Um, I don't like when people necessarily like uh, are just victims and only complaining, you know, and not taking responsibility 
and trying to solve the problems. So it's not that I just only like complaining, but I like the truth in the complaining. You know, I love how that makes us get to some deep kind of truth. Um, did you have any others? Uh, no. I don't think so. Well, I can think of a zillion other examples. I know people like to try to, um, have influence, kind of like what you were saying, where they like create, stir up trouble. You know, they like create problems. This is a big one, like I think in high school and stuff, I've definitely experienced it. But it's like you want to have power and influence in your life and in your inner circles. And so then, you know, they stir up trouble. They'll be like, oh, did you see the way she looked at you? I don't know. She might be mad at you, you know, or something where you're like stirring up trouble or with guys. I've seen it happen where they like make fun. I mean, this happens with girls too, but, um, you know, make fun of somebody to like put them in their place, you know, and they like that, put them in their place, make them feel kind of lower than you. And is it because you actually want to be higher? It's because you want power or you want influence. You want the ability to stir up trouble. You want, you know, people to, you want to matter. You want your opinion or the thing you said to matter. And yeah, maybe you do want to feel high up or like you've got, but it's all coming down to like power. There is nothing wrong with wanting some power. We all do. We Self power, self love, influence, mattering to others. That stuff is just true across the board for every human. But it's when you're taking the power over others or at other people's expense or you're doing this like sideways stuff to get it and it's gotten out of check and out of balance and you're letting it rule. That's when it's a problem. But anyway, so the whole point of this exercise is like, love yourself, man. Get into that best friendship relationship with you by owning it, claiming it, laughing at it, making it, you know, I'm going to say cute, you know, because it's like... I don't have to be controlled by this. There is a total dark side to me, but it's not scary. It's just the thing. And they're actually all rooted in these seeds of things that everybody wants. It's just that sometimes I let it get out of step or it's also just flavors. It's just flavors. Like maybe my friend who loves the pity side, he also really loves the sad side of life. He likes to be sad. I do too. Sometimes I really, you can enjoy the heck out of that flavor. Like that one where I'm talking, I like complaints. I love that grumpy flavor. Mm -hmm. It's like a flavor that I enjoy because it, it helps me. It helps me vent. Um, and even if I couldn't name anything that it actually did for me, other than I just like that flavor, that's okay too. I just like that flavor. Uh, you know, because all the flavors are a part of just being a freaking human and like enjoying your life. And we might as well sort of just like own it. Like this is my life. And guess what? I like grumpy. Um, or, you know, sad flavors. I love sad flavors. Uh, whatever. And sometimes I push people <laughs> because I want to see the human will. And maybe if I see that they're not liking me push them and they're like had enough, I can let that go and see the human will elsewhere mm -hmm. um, and figure that out a different way. Uh, or I can like know what I'm good at. Like I think it's hilarious. I do this for a job. It's like, oh, I picked a good thing, you know, because it's like, use your skill. Use your little twisted guilty pleasure <laughs> for your advantage. Like, yeah, I'm a good pusher. You want to come to me for some classes? I'll push you. You achieve your physical best. Let's do it. Um, so anyways, all right. So enjoy doing this with your partner and sharing and getting ideas off of each other and like just embracing, embracing your guilty pleasures. Like do it up, celebrate.